Google Drive PC and Mac desktop app is being replaced. Google said it will no longer support the Google Drive for Mac, PC desktop app, now officially deprecated. The app has been available since July and it backs up files and folders from a PC or Mac to Google Drive automatically. It will have all the same features as the Google Drive desktop app that most users now access on a regular basis, but with an added photo capability as well. The most important point of all this though is that nothing is happening to your cloud-based files. It will let you sync folders, access cloud files on your computer and more. You can go to the Help Center for more information on Drive File Stream. Say goodbye to time-consuming file syncing and any concerns about disk space. For those using the G Suite service, the solution is called Drive File Stream, an app that will allow for quicker, more streamlined access to their files and also the ability to choose which ones are made available offline, rather than forcing you to download all the files you need. File Stream makes them searchable from your desktop and intelligently downloads the files you use. With Drive File Stream, all your files are always ready for you and your colleagues. As Google transitions users to either Drive File Stream or Backup and Sync, current Drive for Mac, PC users could start seeing messages in October warning them that the old desktop client is being phased out. It also brings teams together with multiple sync and file sharing features. While Drive File Stream was activated this week, the full application won't become generally available until September 26, Google said. The result is less disk space taken up by Drive data but almost seamless access to all your company's files. The default is that if Google Drive for Windows and Mac OS was permitted, so is Backup and Sync. When both apps are installed, users will be prompted to stop syncing my drive with Backup and Sync. It's a different story for G Suite customers. Or, you can opt for one of Google's two replacement apps. For small businesses and others with a G Suite account, Drive File Stream will give you access to your cloud files by streaming them. Previously, admins could only do these things for an entire domain. It will have all the same features as the Google Drive desktop app that most users now access on a regular basis, but with an added photo capability as well. The Google Drive and Google Photos apps for Android and iOS remain available. GE Suite is a collection of cloud-based applications increasingly being used by more small businesses. It lets users nominate the folders they want to continuously back up to Google Drive. The new Drive file stream application has been available to early adopters since March, so it should be well tested by the time it reaches the rest of us. Launched to early adopters in March. Drive File Stream is a new desktop application that allows you to quickly access all of your Google Drive files on demand, directly from your computer, meaning you use nearly none of your hard drive space and spend less time waiting for files to sync, Google said Wednesday in a post on its G Suite blog. Say goodbye to time-consuming file syncing and any concerns about disk space. If you are a consumer. You can install Backup and Sync and you will have the features of Google Drive and Google Photos Uploader. One significant change is that Team Drive files are read-only when opened in Drive File Stream. However, if you've implemented the PC or Mac desktop app into your routine, meaning you don't really access your files using a browser, then you're going to have to make the switch sooner rather than later. For those using the G Suite service, the solution is called Drive File Stream an app that will allow for quicker, more streamlined access to their files and also the ability to choose which ones are made available offline. Backup and Sync, for example, does not provide users with access to files in Team Drives or support streaming files on demand. Drive File Stream, on the other hand, doesn't allow users to sync other folders such as Document or Desktop. If you have the old Google Drive, click on this link to upgrade to the new version. Backup and Sync. Starting on September 26, all business, education, and enterprise G Suite accounts will get file stream unless administrators turn it off. It's a different story for G Suite customers. Previously, admins could only do these things for an entire domain. Google's self driving car quest now runs through Mountain View, California. John Krafsik can speak two languages Motor City and Silicon Valley. And if Google makes progress in developing self-driving cars, it might have his translation skills to thank. After building his career at Ford Motor Company and Hyundai Motor Company, Mr. Krafsik, 55 years old, 
now heads Google's self-driving car effort, called Waymo. Unlike automotive industry executives, who tend to have plush offices, he has a desk among software engineers. On a recent afternoon, the desk was mostly clear except for a copy of trade journal Automotive News. The tech and auto industries have been at loggerheads for years. General Motors Company was so annoyed with Google, a unit if Alphabet Incorporated. It once tossed one of its software engineers off a test track for plowing through cones. Fiat Chrysler Automobile and V's Dodge ran a television ad that took a thinly veiled shot at the tech giant. More than two years of on and off talks with Ford were fruitless. The mutual mistrust has fostered a confusing array of alliances between automakers, ride hailing companies, rental car concerns, and tech giants. Silicon Valley looked down its nose at the mundane work of manufacturing. Detroit feared being turned into a commodity producer making a shelf for others to fill like cell phone handset makers, a problem Mr. Krafsik wants to solve. We're not a disruptive element, we're an enabling element, he said in an interview. Whether Mr. Krafsik can knit the two industries together will go a long way in determining the future shape of the robot car market and who stands to profit from it. At Waymo, Mr. Krafsik is leading efforts to apply driverless technology to a range of uses, whether for ride hailing, freight delivery or public transportation and possibly license it to car makers. He has forged partnerships with Fiat Chrysler and is in talks with Honda to build self-driving cars. That's helped Waymo deploy the largest fleet of self-driving cars, racking up more than 3 million miles of testing on public roads and leaving GM, Ford and dozens of other automakers rushing to develop their own technology. There have also been setbacks. GM, the largest U.S. automaker by sales, explored partnerships with Waymo but shifted tactics after talks stalled and instead acquired an autonomous car tech startup called Cruise Automation in a deal that could be worth more than $1 billion. It also invested $500 million in ride-sharing startup Lyft Inc. Talks also unraveled with Ford, which earlier this year pledged to invest $1 billion in artificial intelligence startup Argo AI. Some question whether Mr. Krafsik has figured out how to maneuver the levers of power within the large tech company. He needs to be a futurist, a technologist, a salesman, a counter-regulator, a hacker, a financier, said one Google car alum. Misunderstandings between Detroit and Silicon Valley were commonplace. After Google began teasing details about its car efforts in 2010, automotive executives were dismissive of the engineers Google recruited from self-driving car competitions held by the Department of Defense. Google's engineers, meanwhile, turned their noses up at Detroit in their pursuit to quickly put the technology on the road. One of the earliest flirtations with an automaker, Fiat Chrysler's Dodge brand, didn't go far. Google gave a test ride to a senior executive, according to people familiar with the matter said. Soon after, Dodge began running commercials mocking the idea of self-driving vehicles made by a search engine company. In the TV spots, the baritone voice of actor Michael C. Hall says, We've seen that movie. It ends with robots harvesting our bodies followed by footage of the 2011 Dodge Charger that he introduced as the leader of the human resistance. Around the same time, members of the Google team were invited to an event by GM as it began selling in late 2010 the plug-in hybrid Chevrolet Volt, Detroit's high-profile effort to counter Toyota's Prius. During a driving session on a closed course, one of the Google employees began showing off his drifting skills where the driver intentionally oversteers through a turn. The stunt knocked over safety cones. A furious GM manager threw the team out, said a person at the event. The incident became lore among some GM managers. We had to restrict them a bit. They weren't very good drivers said a former senior GM executive involved with the Volt introduction. At least not as good as the car guys from Detroit. Google declined to comment. Google's so-called chauffeur team, which in its earliest days was a ragtag bunch, tried to polish its pitch to charm Ford. The Dearborn, Michigan company was interested in replacing its vehicle's software with Google products such as Maps and Music but the Google team only wanted to talk about robot cars. A person familiar with the effort said, We came across as arrogant valley punks, and we were, a former Google employee said. Ford executives were put off by the fact that Google was testing vehicles on the roadways, 
a practice Ford considered premature. They were looking at our vehicles and thinking of them like science fair projects, the former Google employee said. Google didn't have luck with Japanese automakers, either. Discussions with Honda Motor Company prior to 2014 didn't progress, said Nick Sugimoto, the head of Honda's Silicon Valley office. They were inflexible. They weren't clear about what they wanted, and they really didn't listen to me. He said, Google couldn't decide whether it should develop its own car or leave it to an automaker. At one point they debated the merits of acquiring electric car company Tesla Inc. Google co-founder Larry Page told the group, according to a person in attendance, that he didn't want to drive a Tesla, he wanted to drive a Larry. A Waymo spokesman declined to comment. In 2014, Google sent a chill through the automotive industry with the unveiling of a pod-like car it had designed. The Firefly car sent a clear message to Detroit that Silicon Valley could compete. Apple's efforts to develop its own self-driving technology leaked out in 2015. Google was eager to put more vehicles on the road to test with real customers and pushed for putting the technology in Ford and GM vehicles. Those talks also stalled. John Lochnor, GM's head of R&D visited the Google campus and expressed doubt the technology was ready for use, according to people familiar with the meeting. Months later GM dispatched its president and its product chief to smooth things over with Google, but the two sides still couldn't cement a deal. GM executives were unhappy Google wanted the automaker to only supply vehicles, these people said. Google thought it had to leverage, thinking GM didn't have another option, this person said. To its chagrin. GM surprised the industry last year with plans to acquire cruise automation. Mr. Page and Google's other founder Sergey Brin realized they needed someone from the automotive industry with relationships, according to a person familiar with their thinking. In September 2015, they hired Mr. Krafsik. He had begun his automotive career more than 30 years ago at a car factory about a half-hour drive from Waymo's offices. As a young engineer turned business student at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, he visited 90 car factories in 15 countries to study why the Japanese companies were better at making cars than U.S. companies. His studies contributed to a seminal book, The Machine That Changed the World on lean production techniques that inspired a generation of car makers. As chief executive of Hyundai Motor America, he helped make sales gains in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis when other automakers were failing. His name had been floated as a potential Ford chief when Alan Mulally he retired in 2014 and as a candidate to run GM after it emerged from bankruptcy. He also had experience in the tech sector as president of online car buying website True Car. Being able to speak the language of the automotive ecosystem is very important to us, said Astro Teller, head of Alphabet Google X an R&D division that was home for the self-driving project until being spun out as Waymo last year. Mr. Krafsik joined Google when the company was months into talks with Ford about investing in an electric car program in exchange for thousands of cars. The sides were so close to a deal that a news release had been drafted, according to people familiar with the matter. Mr. Krafsik told Messers, Page and Brin he thought the project was too costly and time-consuming. The people said. Google ended the talks. Several of the program's top engineers have left under his watch, including the program's former leaders, Chris Rumson and Anthony Livanovsky, who both set up competing companies. Mr. Livanovsky is at the center of a legal battle between Waymo and Uber Technologies Inc. Waymo alleges Mr. Livanovsky stole trade secrets from Google to help jumpstart Uber's self-driving program. Uber denies wrongdoing and fired Mr. Livanovsky, who hasn't commented on the allegations. Mr. Krafsik's message to automakers is that he wants to make better drivers, not cars. In a world of self-driving cars, Many industry executives expect traditional car ownership to be upended as consumers begin paying for rides rather than sheet metal. In a conference room named after a robot, Mr. Krafsik scribbled numbers on a whiteboard, 3 trillion and 17 million. The bigger number was the total miles driven in the U.S. last year, while the smaller one was roughly the number of new car sales across the country. The challenge was to get consumers spending on the distances they travel in cars rather than on the cars themselves. If the average large automotive company turns a profit of about $1,400 per vehicle sold, he said, 
a vehicle that lasts 150,000 miles only garners about a penny per mile. The thing that the industry is struggling with right now is that for the 100 years it's been in existence it's been focused on the number of units built, he said. We are moving to a world where it has to be miles driven. Mr. Crack 6 said he began talks with Sergio Martian, the chief executive of Fiat Chrysler which lacked the resources to develop its own self-driving software. Months later the two executives announced a deal for Waymo to integrate its hardware into 100 minivans, a partnership that was expanded to 500 more minivans this year. Mr. Krafsik liked that the new Chrysler Pacifica minivan had two things, rear doors that opened and close with the push of a button and plenty of electrical power to run onboard computers needed to drive the car. The trial program marked a turning point for Google. For the first time it was working with an automaker to install its own software and hardware. That allowed it to retire the Firefly. Mr. Krafsik then developed a deal with Avis Budget Group to maintain the growing fleet. This year, Google began allowing non-company families in the Phoenix area to try out the vehicles. Waymo is also working on a user experience that allows passengers to feel comfortable with riding in a vehicle without a human driver. It includes a display system that tells riders why the vehicle is making decisions, such as stopping. People familiar with the effort said, in December, Mr. Krafsik announced that Waymo and Honda had rekindled talks over a possible partnership. This time around, Google's attitude was sharply different, said Honda's Mr. Sugimoto. John was very clear about his intention is not to invade the auto industry or destroy the existing supply chain, he said. During a tour that he often gives to curious automotive executives, Mr. Krafsik rushed through a garage with rows of decommissioned robot cars, now being prepared for exhibits around the world. Then he opened a door to the employee parking lot and pointed to his ride, a white 1990 Porsche 964 Targa. People worry that with the work we're doing, that we're going to take all of the joy out of driving, he said. I don't believe that's true. There's always going to be stuff like this. Google appeals multi-billion dollar reuse search fine. Google on Monday announced plans to appeal the 2.4 billion euro. 2.9 billion dollars antitrust fine it received from the European Union. The EU fined Google for abusing its dominance in Europe, saying the company gives prominent placement in searches to its own comparison shopping service. It could take several years before General Court, Europe's second highest, hears the appeal, according to Reuters. The Commission ordered Google to stop using the technology by September 28 which it says gives preference to the company's advertising. It is now reviewing Google's proposal to comply with the decision. Mark Mahaney, analyst at RBC Capital, published a research note Sunday describing how regulatory activity taken against Alphabet's ad company Google could drive up traffic acquisition costs when it comes to generating advertising dollars. Mahaney remains bullish on Alphabet's growth but sets up a hypothetical scenario. The outcome of the EU Android investigation is unknown and leverage could play out several ways. Maybe Google would start charging for Android, he wrote. But tech is a major expense, $21 billion and 17 or 22 percent of Google's ad revenue. It has been a major investor concern. He wrote that every 100 bits per second of increased tech would clip 40 cents or 1 percent from our EPS estimate. It turns out that the greater risk to Google would likely come from what Mahaney calls multiple versus EPS pressure. Although Google remains trading above its average forward multiple. Google Drive pulls plug on desktop app. Five things for user to know. The tech giant will be eliminating the software and replacing it with an improved version of it. Here are five things you should know about the shift. Alphabet announced that those with the Google Drive software will have until March 12, 2018 to switch to an alternative if they'd like to keep their important files backed up. The app will actually stop working on December 11, 2017, before shutting down all your files three months later. For most customers, the company suggests that users upgrade to the new Google Backup and Sync software. The app has been available since July and it backs up files and folders from a PC or Mac to Google Drive automatically. With this new software, Alphabet will select the contents of your desktop documents folder and pictures folder as the items that it will back up. However, you can change your settings to ensure that only the files in certain locations will be backed up. 
Alphabet encourages business users to use a different software in the form of Google Drive file stream, which will launch on September 26. A big difference between the two is the fact that file stream does not store any files locally, as it chooses to keep them in the cloud at all times. You can then stream these items to your desktop at your convenience.